CJ Stroud hasn't practiced all week. What's his outlook? Aaron Jones should be back this week. What should we expect? Justin Jefferson is coming off a ribs and chest injury. Is it possible he could still be effective? Tyreek Hill, that high ankle sprain, Idios meal. Can we trust him? Want to know who you can trust? You could trust the Injury Prone Podcast. Amigos, amigas, I'm Jorge Martin. You could find me at Jorge Martin 17. You can find my work at uh, Yahoo Fantasy. The Injury Prone Podcast here is to, you know, you're getting the most up to date injury news that's data based analysis. It's going to help you win your league. And, and you know who's going to help you win your league right now? Hey, you know what? My compadre, mi amigo. Hey, Edwin Porras, Dr. Edwin Porras. ¿Cómo estamos, mi amigo? Estamos bien, man. We got to catch up a little bit. We uh, were not together last week, so we had a little bit of catching up to do. So we were talking there before we hit record about all kinds of things that weren't even fantasy football or NFL related. So that, that's typically how it goes when you're when you're good friends. So um, we're in the fantasy playoffs now. We are yes. in the fantasy playoffs, and there are a lot of names to get to. Um, but we are going to try to cover it as quickly, as, as concisely as possible. Uh, and then, of course, we'll hit the Cultura class at the end. Thank you. To every, if you're still listening, by the way, um, that means that you're in it, right? You're probably in it or you're grinding for DFS purposes one way or the other. Thank you so much for following along all season long. We hope that we were uh, helpful. And one thing, and what I've been meaning to do this to ask the, the listeners, if you have any type of feedback for us, we'll take it. And we'll we'll run with it. So drop it in the comments. Let us yes. know. You know, make it bullet points. Make it concise. And don't be hate. You know, no hate, right? I mean, we all we all we're not perfect, obviously. So anything that can make this more uh, appealing and and um, make you want to come back to it every week, then just let us know. Uh, put that. Drop that down in the comments. Um, that's all I got, really. Um, Jorge, I'm ready. No, I actually, yeah, especially you know. Uh, I, you know what, anything you, anything you want to hear kind of the way you want us to drive this, if there's a subject you want us to talk about on Cultura class, Hey, we'll, we're up for that too. So, uh, you know, we, there are limitless amounts of food to talk about. So, uh, on there and, and music and Cultura, everything that's in there. So, but, um, we're going to, we're going to jump into the show right now and we've got some guys that have already been ruled out or are doubtful and on, on our, you know, we've got CJ Stroud, uh, hasn't practiced all week. We're going to talk about it. I'm going to, I'm going to pull the thread on him with you, with him, with you. Kenny Pickett out, Jonathan Taylor, Alexander Madison, Isaiah Pacheco, Brian Robinson. They've all been ruled out. AJ Dillon is doubtful, which it kind of goes hand in hand with one of the guys we talked to. We're going to talk about it in a second. Devon Achane. Again, we thought we were done talking about him, but he's, he's back in our, in our lives. Ramondre Stevenson just got ruled out right before uh, we hit record on this. Christian Watson, he's doubtful. Nico Collins, doubtful. It's a it's a long list, but I want to I, I want to ask about C.J. Stroud. Um, a, a question about him. It's it, it's so rare for a quarterback to play to to practice to not practice all week, and then and then the play on 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 Sunday. Um, I mean, I, right now, does it trend for him to? Is it trending for him to to sit out? And actually, since since we've had some quarterbacks who've kind of like miraculously came back, uh, is it kind of looking good? If they sit him, does it look good for kind of like his long term outlook uh, to make sure make sure their new franchise quarterback is the man is back? No, this this it's it's always hard to know exactly what's going on, but it's a good question. You always can view teams into bucket them into two different buckets. The first bucket is maybe they fudged it a little bit, maybe they pushed them along a little quicker than they should have, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Concussion protocol isn't perfect and it's also not time based. It's not oh you you waited a week and now you're ready to go. So that is why you see a lot of guys clear concussion protocol, but then they end up re-injuring like maybe they didn't actually clear it before so that that's just sort of a part of of the game now again we'll never know who sort of pushed it along faster than it should have gone who didn't and um that's just the unfortunate reality but it seems like this is my bias right and i could be wrong because this is totally opinion based based on what i see uh it could be that the texans decided like you said let's just sit them there's no reason to get like another have another Tua on our hands to a situation on our hands um even if he looks okay then it's still uh, it's iffy let's just sit him 
Or it could be that he straight up just didn't pass the protocol. He still has headaches. Right. He's still having memory loss. He still hasn't passed all the protocols of testing. Um, all that stuff. All that can be true. Maybe all of it's true in the first place. Right. I don't really know. But what I can tell you is that if they're sitting him this week, it's probably a good idea because the further away you get from concussions in theory, it, even though it's not a time based thing, uh, the more time you have for the brain to heal and the more and the safer you're you're going to be ultimately. So I think this is probably the right call uh, for the Texans, despite their sort of uh, their their playoff uh, hopes. And that, and that's tough. And you know what? I've got a I've got a difficult decision in a in a fantasy league uh, that's in a fantasy team that's in the playoffs where um, C.J. Stroud's my guy, and I, and my other quarterback is Trevor Lawrence. So, um, which you know we didn't talk about him, but I mean he's obviously limited right there. So I mean a lot of people have have these kind of questions. Uh, you know, I'm I may be scouring the waiver wire looking for Gardner Minshew to tell you the truth because he's home and and uh, and it, it's. It, it's not a bad, it's not a bad, uh, not, not a, not a bad matchup for him, but, uh, how long, but when, when would you think that they, do you think that they'll wait until Sunday morning to make him inactive if they do, or could they, I mean, or, and just to kind of like hold out hope that maybe he passes the protocol? Um, it's certainly possible. It's certainly possible. Uh, but I don't necessarily, uh, think that's going to be the case at this point. I'm not sure. Um, you know, if that's really going to be what happens here, I think they actually, they actually officially ruled him out. Didn't they? Unless I'm mistaken. Let's see here. I think they just, they, they just said he wasn't in practice. I don't think he got ruled out yet. Ah, uh, okay. I was under the impression that he was totally out. Um, so you just shout us doubt. Oh, he's doubtful. He's doubtful. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I don't think he's going to make it through. Honestly. I, it's, it, it, I mean, I can't, I can't picture that, you know, coming off a brain injury that he's going to be playing on, on, uh, on Sunday. So, yeah. Yeah. So get the, get, you know what, send the questions in, you know, you guys know where to find us on Twitter. Uh, mm -hmm. send the questions in, you got any, any, anybody that you want to find out if you, you know, to, to pick up, you know, there's a lot of guys out there on the waiver wire, or maybe some people have like grabbed guys up. So, Hey, get them in, you know, uh, I get them in there. All right. So it's time to get into the main course. Mi amigo. Um, and we, we've already, uh, got, got the appetizer Aaron Jones. I mean, he's it's, I think it's great that considering the fact that when he was injured, when he was initially injured before he had, you know, MRIs or anything like that, or, or even got the, the, the exam right there, he thought he, he tore his ACL. So I think, you know, he missed several games, but it looks like he's training toward playing and, if AJ Dillon is is doubtful, could he get a full workload this week, um, or do you think they kind of ease him back in? Well, typically I would say yeah, they're probably going to ease him in. But I mean, who else do they have at this point, right? Yeah. They're not going to give. They're not going to give. I mean, Jaden Reed, I think, takes some carries, right? Uh, but that's not going to be anything uh, of real significance. So I do think that Aaron Jones is going to jump back in. Most gamers in most situations, especially if you are in the playoffs and you made if, if you made it through the playoffs with Aaron Jones with uh, on your team. I mean, your team's probably pretty stacked. Congratulations. Uh, but you probably have to play him this week. You probably have to throw him in your lineup. Most gamers probably do. There is re-injury risk for the MCL, like you mentioned, and there's re-injury risk from his hamstring uh, strain earlier this season. So he's not going to be 100 percent, but that doesn't mean that volume, uh, you know, that volume is going to sort of mitigate that. So you got to throw him out there. Uh, you got to put them, you got to, you got to play them. But um, I don't know from like, I know volume is going to be a good, uh, you know, good for him, but what kind of matchup do you see for him? It's a tough matchup against the Bucks. The Bucks are really good against the run. Uh, but the fact is uh, Aaron Jones is really good in the passing game. So Aaron, so I think Jordan Love is going to be, uh, could use him, use him as an outlet right there. And um, I, I mean, that's the thing. He's such a dual threat and, the other part about it is Ito Sabes, you're in Florida, Florida team going up to, uh, going up to green Bay, you know, where it's going to be cold. It's going to be cold. I mean, I'm looking at nflweather.com and it's going to be 40 degrees, but that's, I mean, you know, that's a jolt when it comes, you know, when, when you've been living in 70 degree weather for all, all this time. So I, 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 I think that could be, I think that could be good for, for him in the long run, but especially the work in the passing game. And again, you, like you mentioned, it, he could be the only game in town for them. So, uh, want to go to the next one, Justin Jefferson. Uh, I mean, that looked like a vicious hit. I'm glad he didn't end up with like a, you know, with, with like a, you know, a broken rib or anything like that. I mean, cause it, it looked ugly, but, um, 
may, you know, changing the quarterback right now and uh, playing against a, a secondary that hasn't been as good in uh, in Cincinnati. Uh, could he could he be could he be looking back, looking at a full workload, regular regular Lotman routes run? It's Justin Jefferson, so I'm going to say probably, right? I mean, he's one of the best receivers in the league. We've really been robbed of watching him play for a lot yeah. of the season. Now, he went to the hospital, which is obviously a big deal. But, you know, like we saw with Derek Carr, like we saw with him, it doesn't always mean that something insidious or something bigger is going on. So, uh, obviously, he cleared concussion protocol. I can tell you he's still going to be bruised up. I can tell you he's going to be super sore. And I think that matches up with what we see from a data perspective. When receivers come back from this, these injuries, these ribs injuries, these uh, combined sort of shoulder ribs impact injuries, you see an 18% dip in yak, right? So, yards after the catch. That makes sense, right? Like, they're, not, they're trying to go down a little quicker than usual. Um, and you also see a 16% re-injury rate. All that is to say, leave that to the DFS grinders. If you made it this far and you have Justin Jefferson, maybe you don't need to start him. Maybe you can wait a week, right? I don't know. If you're in the playoffs and Justin Jefferson was your first overall pick, like, yeah, maybe you freaking struck gold, right? Maybe you're you're the lucky guy that, that drafted CJ Stroud late or, you know, and you drafted Tank Dell late and you drafted, uh, I don't know, you avoided the landmines of, 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 um, of Jalen Waddle, you avoided the landmines, right? Of of Mark Andrews, like maybe you're stacked and don't need to start him, but most teams probably should start Justin Jefferson in this situation. Again, I don't expect it to be a ceiling game, but he's still going to be the number one target on that team. Um, and if I can tell you, you know, you tell me, I imagine Nick Mullins is going to be a guy that's going to say, oh, cool, I'm getting an opportunity to start here. I'm just going to chuck the ball to Justin Jefferson as many times as possible. Absolutely. I mean, he's going to feed him. And the other thing that the other factor that that we're, we're talking about in here is old college teammate is on the other side, Jamar Chase. I mean, you, you think they're not going to want to go like a, a, a game of one on one between the two of them? I think I, I think they're going to they, they've talked. They both openly talked about trying to get 2000 yards uh, before. It's not an option for them. Maybe it's going to be an option for our next guy. But uh but I don't think he's going to, I think there's going to be the competitive juices that are going to come into, come into play with him. And, and, and again, Nick Mullins, you're right. He's going to feed him. Maybe he's going to go TJ Hawkinson a little bit more. Uh, they're they're, they're starting running back. Alexander Madison has already been ruled out. They're going to go Ty Chandler. Who's a little bit more of a running threat, not so much in, in the passing game. So, uh, yeah, you got Justin Jefferson, you're throwing it to him and hopefully you're not throwing something where he's got to go way up out, you know, hit him in stride, get him, get, get him, get him running, get, get some yak and maybe get out of bounds. So, uh, hopefully maybe, and it's going to be a little chilly, you know, it's going to be in, a game's going to be in Cincinnati. So the weather might be a little bit more, what, what's the weather looking like? It's going to be 49 degrees, maybe 2% chance of showers. So, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe the cool weather kind of, kind of helps them in this one. So, uh, vamos a ver. um, all right. Our, our next headliner, Tyreek Hill, he's the guy that I mean scared the hell out of everybody on Monday Night Football when, he, especially when he was grabbing his knee at the beginning. Uh, I, I was worried it was something like that. I mean, we we all want to see something special, but I mean, the, this this I mean, we've talked about ankles. Uh, you've talked about ankles ad nauseum. How they're just I mean, it's it's a flat tire for for a lot of these guys. This guy's special superhuman. What uh, can be his outlook? Yeah, he's superhuman, right? Um, but I think we can still dig into the numbers a little bit. Again, I want to preface by saying don't fade Tyreek Hill for the same reason you don't fade Justin Jefferson, right? We don't fade these guys. So if you're in a season log league and you're wondering, oh, should I start him? Should I not? First of all, I guess I should say, I do think that he's going to come back. I don't think that he's going to sit out. And a lot of that is probably circumstance driven, right? Like we, we just talked about the 2000 yards, right? He's trying to get there. Um, and if he misses even one game, he could really fall behind even at this point, considering the last game he had. So this is definitely a consideration that teams take. It's a consideration players know about. The quarterback knows about it. Like everybody knows that he's trying to get to that milestone. Um, so he's probably going to play, but he's going to play at less than 80 percent. I know that for a fact. So um, he shouldn't be faded. With all that said, here's what you can probably expect. When we've seen wide receivers after a high ankle sprain come back, there is a 32% re-injury rate. One in every three wide receivers who comes through 
trying to play through a high ankle sprain and they come back too soon. One in three of them will re-injure and leave the game. We saw that with Mike Williams last year. All right. Same thing happened to him. If you compare that to running backs, running backs is 12%. So that's the primary concern, right? Um, so that is a primary concern there. Also, when you look at wide receivers, uh, when I did the, uh, the injury prone draft guide and playbook this year, I looked at weak winner rates. So I defined a weak winner essentially as somebody who scored at least 150% of their average score, right? So if they average 10 points, for example, uh, and you know, 150% plus would be 15 points or more. Um, there's a 0%. In other words, let me put it this way. Since 2014, there have been zero wide receivers who scored at least 150% of their uh, of their average for the season after a high ankle sprain. Zero. What else? Let's see. There's a lot that are getting into here, right? So then, obviously, because there's such a high re-injury rate, because they do have such a hard time even staying on the field because they come back too mm -hmm. soon, there's a dip in PPR, a 34% dip in PPR points and there's a 26% dip in targets per game. So all of that being said, <laughs> I know that sounds grim. I know that sounds scary. I know that you're in the playoffs. You're in the first round of the playoffs. Tyree kill is literally built different. They're trying to get him to the, the 2000 yard mark. And he, he just needs for fantasy purposes. He needs one, two, maybe three plays to pay off. So you throw him out there. He's your best shot at getting uh, past the first round, this is your best shot, and um, you shouldn't fade. You shouldn't fade him, right? So, but I'll leave it to you to talk to me about sort of the matchups and what you're seeing in this. Well, he's got uh, probably the best secondary going against him. I mean, this game's going to be in Miami, so that's that's going to be a little bit better. The, the, talk about some some wind and some rain might be a factor, which uh, that was early on, but now it looks like wind isn't going to be as much of a factor. I, I look at this. I, I I mean, the matchup is one thing to me. To me, the other oh. thing is I I feel like this robs him of one of his most underrated traits is the way he's able to stop and change direction like on a dime and be full speed uh no matter what maybe i i mean i would imagine this is going to impact that but um i mean he's he's got that dog and i think he also saw i think i think mike mcdaniel and uh Tua. i think they all saw how dysfunctional the, the offense was when he wasn't out there so i mean i, I in, a, in a way it's gonna it's it helps his it helps his case the other part about it is they're going to want him out there because they're fighting for the top spot. They don't want to have to go to Baltimore. They don't want to have to go into the Northeast to play, uh, to play. They want them to come down to Miami and, and, uh, and, 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 you know, have to have to go for the Super Bowl again, you know, against the dolphins in their, in their backyard. So um, yeah, I mean, the dome, good weather teams, they don't travel well, you know, in January. So that, that to me is the big thing. And I, and I've got that, I've got that question mark because Tyreek Hill is on my main familia team. Luckily I have a first round buy, so I can, I could kind of sit them out a week. I don't have to worry about this matchup. The matchup gets better next week. Um, well, kind of, I mean, they got to play Baltimore, but that game could be, you know, a fiesta of game, a fiesta of fantasy points. So ojalá. Ojalá. So, uh, yeah, but yeah, it is definitely a, t a tougher matchup this week, but, um, I wanted to pull on a thread that, uh, that you sent out, um, uh, on a tweet that you sent out earlier this week that I, that I also replied about, you were talking about quarterback injuries and how quarterback injuries were, were, uh, more prevalent, uh, slightly more prevalent last year, though people were kind of a little bit, um, taken aback because they were like, oh my God, it's the worst quarterback injury season yet. But, you know, one of the things that you've often talked about with quarter, you know, with injuries, with the injury prone is how correlated they are or non-correlated they are. Well, I think one of the things that's happening here is it's the bigger names that are getting hurt. Deshaun Watson going out for the season, Joe Burrow going out for the season, Justin Herbert, Daniel Jones. I mean, all these guys who were drafted to be the, the starting quarterback and single QB. I mean, is, I mean, maybe not, maybe we're not talking so much the psychology of it all, but I mean, do you think that's, that's making it a factor in uh, why people are kind of like, Oh my God, this is the worst injury year ever. I do think so. I do think that's the case. Um, I, I think that a lot of people don't understand or, and I don't necessarily blame them. Right. Um, they don't really recognize how often guys actually are injured. And so I, and I also think that what you said has a lot to do 
with where we are in the quarterback landscape. A lot of it is, uh, you know, guys that have already had uh, that are really high profile, right? It started with Aaron Rodgers, right? And I'm looking for that specific right. tweet. Uh, I'm looking for that specific tweet right now because I think that it would make sense to read the names off and people will understand like, oh, yeah, I think that, you know, that this is probably what, what happened with the situation. So in 2022, uh, these are quarterbacks who missed at least three games in the season, starting quarterbacks, 2022, Mac Jones, Zach Wilson, not really big names, right? Tua was a big name. Ryan Tannehill, not really a big name. Dak Prescott, pretty big name. Lamar Jackson, pretty big name. Jimmy Garoppolo, Kyler Murray. Then you have Matt Stafford, Carson Wentz, Jameis Winston. Trey Lance was sort of a hot commodity at the time. Now we're looking at Kenny Pickett, Anthony Richardson, Daniel Jones, Deshaun Watson, Joe Burrow. Holy shit, right? Even those, I'm not even done, right? Uh, Aaron Rodgers, Kirk Cousins, Justin Herbert. We're looking at all these guys that are bigger names having more injury bad luck, right? So a lot of this is driven by the narrative of, oh my gosh, it seems to be that there are so many more injuries. We actually don't, right? We're we're heading into week 15. Maybe there will be a small random uptick of, of two to three additional injuries, right? There are three weeks left, four weeks left in the season, the NFL regular season. So maybe there will be more guys by the end of this uh, by the end of this year that are added to the list. We hope not. But I do think that a lot of this is, again, narrative driven. I think this is super important because as a general rule of thumb as a fantasy player, and we won't go too long over, I'm, I'm already rambling. If you just oh, take if you just take narrative and you apply it to your draft strategy, to your best ball strategy, to your betting strategy, you're probably going to miss. There's going to be a margin there that's significant to me. I know this is subjective. There's like a 5 to 10% margin just based on injury narratives of, alone that you're going to miss out on a lot of money or you're going to lose a lot of money about. So I do think that things that you and I are doing, like this podcast means a lot to me more than just you should start him, you should bench him. Because I do think that there are, especially for the sharp population out there, there are a lot of, uh, there are advantages to be had in the margins. And to this day, a lot of people still aren't taking advantage of it. And you know what? And I'm I'm kind of projecting ahead right now. I think there's going to be a little bit more, maybe not a late round QB renaissance, but I think it's going to be a little bit more of a middle round QB where some of these guys are going to get pushed down because they don't have the sexy numbers and people. Are, and I think there's going to be some people who are going to be like, okay, I've got to go get Jalen hurts. I've got to go get Josh Allen early. And uh, these guys are going to get pushed down a little bit. So um, yeah, I think it, I, this is something that I'm going to be fascinated about something I'm going to be keeping a, a very close eye about because I was a very much elite QB quarterback. Um, uh, strategy guy this year, not but not just the top three. I had about a top six or seven that I that I looked at. So um, still still look at that. So uh, that was good. That was good, compa. That was good. Um, all right. So hey, make sure you're going to the Patreon. Okay, make sure you're going to uh, injuryprone.com/slash Patreon. You're going to get more on guys like Geno Smith. Speaking of quarterback injuries, Alexander Madison, oh Chris Olave, more. Make sure to join patreon.com slash injury prone rate review the podcast get get in there so uh compa we got one more one more thing a little fun one and i kind of had the idea for this I, I was at a clipper game uh a few nights ago and they played suavemente uh and the place just lit up everybody got i mean there were so many people got up various ages various i mean it wasn't just the latinos getting up it was every every ethnicity and it was beautiful every people got up and dancing and everything it was incredible so i wanted to uh i wanted to ask uh suavemente or suavecito the old lowrider classic from the from the early 70s which uh I, i'm gonna i'm gonna share i'm gonna share a little special story on that one but oh so yeah. i gotta i gotta say i am a uh suavemente guy uh the first time I heard that song, it was hilariously catchy. I just couldn't get it out of my head. And it just goes, and for those of you who who haven't heard it, uh, just Google it, right? Put it in yeah. YouTube, Suavemente. And um, it goes, it's a banger. I would say it's a certified banger. Um, and so I, I have to lean that direction. So I don't know what direction you lean. You know, it, it I, when I saw the the crowds, the crowd just have that reaction. I mean, it was it was special. Uh, it was phenomenal. I mean, it, and I just loved it. I'm still a suavecito guy. 
Uh, and, uh, I, you know what? I have young uncles who would, this was one of the songs that was on the play, the, the playlist growing up, you know, growing up. Uh, but also probably, gosh, about 25 years ago at one of our family, one of our huge familiar weddings, uh, one of my primos made sure they played this song and we all gathered around the bride all the all the primos tios everybody it was all the men in the family and it was one of, i forget which one of my it was one of my uh one of my one of my primas who was getting married and we all sang the song we, we all sang the song six minute version that has continued every wedding so whether oh, wow. whether whether oh, yeah. every whether whether somebody has uh whether somebody's marrying into the familia or it's one of my primas especially especially one of my primas uh they 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 want that they want that moment they want that six minutes uh and we all gather around and and I'm one of the I'm one of the instigators I I always make sure that the DJ knows and the DJ already knows that they got to play the song. But no, yeah, it, yeah. it's we get around and we say the the last few times we've had you know a couple of us a, a couple have had to have the lyrics on their on their phone just to make sure they don't <laughs> they, they don't screw it up. But no, it's still right. you know, uh, and and it, but you don't get you don't get around you don't get the the dancing the singing dancing reaction like you get with suavemente. But it's just it's it's one of those ones that just kind of it, it's a groove it's a groove. So it it's is, always it gonna is. be it, it's always gonna be special for La Familia. Always gonna be special for La Familia. I love you, the question you, suavemente or suavecita. I love that. <laughs> right That's funny. No context. There's gonna be no context for some people. <laughs> anything anything that you know anything that's got suave in it is a good thing. It is a good thing. So oh man, that was good. That was a good cultura class, compa. Good one. Good one. So everybody, familia, amigos, amigas, we're getting out. We're we're getting out of here. Make sure you're getting ready for your playoffs. Get you know, listen to this one back again if you need to. Okay, we're gonna we we're gonna get in there again. Make sure you give us a like and subscribe on YouTube. You can and uh and you can you know give us give us a follow. There's gonna be questions. I know Edwin's gonna be answering questions. Make sure to find his content at fantasypoints.com too. So get get in there so he gets the, the later, latest injury insights. Anything any last uh any last words? Nope. Good luck in week one or week one of the playoffs. Sorry. Yeah, buena suerte, everybody. Buena suerte. Uh yeah, you know what? Gracias for joining us. Adios y salud.